Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today we're going to be discussing medication formulary. Okay, what is that? A formulary is a list of medications that are covered by your insurance. And that's super important because not all medications are actually covered by your insurance. Okay. Now, the formulary is determined by something that's called the Pharmacy Benefits Manager, or the PBM for short. So there actually are completely separate companies or departments within insurance companies that specifically determine pharmacy benefits. And those are called PBMs. And it's that PBM and your employer that determine what particular medications are or not covered on your formulary. So you need to check with your own plan, either through HR or through the phone number that's on the back of your car, specifically for the PBM. Oftentimes there's a different PBM phone number to call. Okay, so your doctor does not know your formulary, so don't even bother asking them, right? Because they have so many different patients with so many different formularies, it is nearly impossible for them to keep track. So my recommendation is don't even bother asking them. They're not gonna know. Who does know is the pharmacy. The pharmacy does know your formulary. So when you go to the pharmacist and there's that computer screen, it's that computer screen that tells them what medications are or are not, not covered for you in your particular situation. Okay, often not covered on the formulary are over-the-counter or OTC medications. So you might want your insurance to cover Tylenol, but it's probably not gonna cover Tylenol because it's over-the-counter. Likewise for ibuprofen, which is the generic form of Advil or Motrin, the 200 milligram pill is over the counter. It's not covered by your insurance, but the higher dosed pills, in other words, like the 600 and the 800 milligram pills are. So sometimes it can even change with the dose. Also cosmetic medications are typically not covered by on the formulary. So this will be things like creams for like wrinkles and also lifestyle medications for like erectile dysfunction may or may not be covered by your formulary as well. Now, there are oftentimes tiers on a formulary, and this applies to a certain type of uh, plan that's called a PPO plan, which many Americans have. You may or may not have a PPO plan, but it's the most common one, so we're gonna go over it now. Tier one is the lowest copay. For example, it might be like $5 for one prescription or one month supply, and that's typically generic medications. Tier two is a medium copay, so it's typically about $25, and that's for what's referred to as preferred brand name medications. Next you have tier three, which is a higher copay, typically about $50, and it is for non-preferred brand medications. And then lastly, there's tier four, where there's not a copay, but rather it's coinsurance. In other words, it's a percentage of what the overall cost of the medication is, and typically it's around 20% coinsurance. And that's typically for specialty medications. And oftentimes those are medications that need to be injected, like Humira for rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, now there are also rules for the formulary and they are different depending on each employer and each PBM. So again, you need to check for your particular situation what your rules are. One of the rules is prior authorization. So your PBM and formulary might cover a particular medication, but they need to get special permission or documentation from the doctor justifying why you need to be on that medication. And as you can imagine, it's typically for more expensive medication. Next is something called step therapy, which says that in order to try a more expensive, let's say brand medication, you have to try the generic version of uh, a medication first. So uh, an example of that might be, there's a, a, a neuropathic pain medication that's called Lyrica, and it might, they might require that you try a generic different medication called gabapentin first. I'm not saying that's gonna apply to your particular uh, situation, but that's just an example. Okay, next up, mandatory generics. So this is where a brand name medication might have a generic available. So one of the most common medications is Lipitor for high cholesterol, but it went off patent and it became generic several years ago, and it's atorvastatin, that's the name. And your particular formulary might say, look, you have to take the atorvastatin and the doctor can write for Lipitor and they can check the box on the prescription that says, do not substitute, but your insurance is not gonna cover it unless you take the atorvastatin. Okay, and last up is mandatory mail order. And this is where 
most PBMs have what's called a mail order program where you can actually get the prescription sent to you directly from the PBM. They got a big warehouse with all the pills in it and they'll send it directly to you through the mail. Now, some PBMs actually require you do this for chronic medications for things like high blood pressure and diabetes that you take for months or years at a time. And of course they do this because it cuts out the middleman of the pharmacy itself which is getting paid. So if they can cut out that middleman, then it can be less expensive for them. And oftentimes they give you, the patient, a break on the cost of the medication as well. So this can be very confusing, but I wanted to start with the basics of a formulary. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.